Hello and welcome everybody and thank you so much if you are joining us live. Um, I am here with an apology because I don't have Dawn with me yet and what I'll do in the meantime is give you an introduction to her. For those of you who may not yet know Dawn, she is a UK-based certified business coach and confidence builder to women creating incredible lives and businesses. She is totally passionate about her client's success, knows what it takes to have that breakthrough, and also what it feels like to achieve it. That's why she created her own unique blend of personal and business coaching to help women build profitable businesses, consistently attract clients with ease, get paid what they're worth, create marketing that works, rewrite their money story, and be the women who really do have all the time and money they dream of. Dawn's 20 years of business experience includes creating multi-million pound projects and developing global brands, as well as helping solopreneurs create and grow their businesses by six figures. She teaches a simple system called the Mindful Money Method, which shows you how to get complete clarity around your money, what you really want it for, and how to create it without spending years slaving away and not living fully. Dawn! Oh, <laughs> I had a little technical blip there, so... No problem. no problem, I'm so happy you made it. I and know, just... me too. Yes, lovely to be here. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm um, well, thank you, Dawn, and thank you. I know you're a very busy lady, and I'm super excited to have you here. And here's Donna. Hi, Donna. So Donna and Chantal are both with us. Fantastic. Dawn, I have, I came on live at four because um, I know it's quite strict in terms of our timing. So and I know I knew these ladies would be joining us. So what I've done is I've given you a little introduction um, mm -hmm. about, uh, yes, about who you are, mm -hmm. some of the magic work that you do. Um, mm -hmm. And so with that, I think I'd love to, if you are ready, um, mm -hmm jump in and ask you to share a bit about your journey and also some of the i know the exciting focus that you've had certainly in the last few months as well um which is so beneficial for for women especially and yeah. our topic being women mm -hmm. income and collaboration so may i hand over to you and say yeah. welcome again thank you yes absolutely so gosh where to begin really so for those who don't know me and i know there'll be others who watch the replay um, I'm a women's empowerment coach. I'm very, very passionate about women feeling completely confident and really clear about who they are, what they want for themselves and know and trust themselves to actually create that. So I actually operate in the world of transformation as a coach and a mentor um, in the belief that it's always a case of 100% possible, 100% of the time, but we have to grow ourselves to be able to do that and to be able to create something different. So how did I come into this space? Um, well, my background and my career is as a professional marketer. I am a chartered marketer, fellow of the, the CIM in the UK. And um, I've worked with many, many, many major global brands over the years. And so I cut my teeth, if you like, in business, in the big global corporate space. Um, and then, you know, I, I got, well, I, I had a fantastic time doing that. And I learned many skills, but I realized that as a woman, um, I was feeling quite unfulfilled and really quite empty after a while of doing that. And I, I was feeling this calling um, probably about 15 years ago will be now, to really um, kind of honour that and to explore what else I was about as a person and what else I felt I could bring into my life and my career, which was, you know, at that time, much more sort of um, project management and brand building and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And, and I recognised that I was missing this piece around fulfilment and a sense of real deep purpose in life. And so I embarked on a journey really into the personal development space and learned a whole host of different skills, um, really out of self-interest in the first place. Um, and then just to sort of bridge a little gap here, I left the corporate world and became a, a consultant, a business consultant. And um, it was really when I was in that particular time in my career, I began to really witness 
many, many people who had great ideas and had great visions, but they were struggling to get them um, off the ground or to achieve the level of um, you know, outcome and result that they wanted. And it was then I understood that it's about ourselves and our personal um, growth and our own personal evolution that really allows us to create to a high degree. Um, so my career then evolved from that point and I mastered lots of the skills within the coaching space and I now I still do that. I love it. I'm really committed to this. And I also went through some personal, um, I guess you could call it life changing trauma sort of experiences. So, um, namely divorce and some major sort of personal kind of upsets in life that I know we all have, but through that journey in particular, I became really aware of my money story and my money situation, which, you know, at that time I'd say was fairly stable, but I'd never studied money and I'd never really come to realize that money is a relationship and it's also a reflection of ourselves. No one ever taught me that. And I've subsequently learned so much about um, what that actually means for us and how we're conditioned to think and feel around money and what that actually then creates and how we can also adjust that and change it. So um, I found myself in a situation where I felt I couldn't leave um, an unhappy situation financially. Um, and so I had to really kind of dig deep into myself to make some radical changes around who I was being, what I was creating to actually then move on and out of a, you know, a situation that I know it's not uncommon. I know I come across many women who are in situations, it doesn't have to be a marriage situation, but in situations that they feel they can't afford to change. And so this is what's brought me into, um, you know, for the past few years, a different space around um, understanding the dynamic between who we are, what our purpose is, what lights us up, what brings fulfillment, how we overcome our blocks and barriers. And also, how can we really, really, really simplify this experience around money and break the old paradigms of it has to be difficult, you have to work hard, all those things, because there is so much sacrifice that many of us have made in our lives to you know, enjoy certain things when actually there's a whole different way of creating it. So, um yeah, it's, there's, there's, a, there's a lot more I could add to that because obviously, you know, um, life has been full, but in a sort of potted history, um, the journey from being a professional corporate employee to being a self-sufficient woman entrepreneur, uh, overcoming those challenges that I've had that you know, we all have our own version of, has really kind of led me to hone in on empowerment and financial freedom because women tell me all the time if they have those things, they can do anything else. Yes, yeah, so powerful. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you for sharing all of this. Um, and the challenges on your journey too, because absolutely, as you say, we all have our challenges. And mm -hmm. I think many people watching will also be able to relate to the courage that it takes to um, go on your own, especially if you've been in corporate and also so um, Donna and Chantal, who are both here with us live, both have their own businesses and kudos to you ladies. It's been a number of years for both of them. So I'm sure they will also be listening closely here, um, especially when you're speaking about the money mindset and to simplify things and overcome the paradigms um, because it is a real thing. And um, it, many of us actually come into that space where we almost have to become empowered when something happens, like you saying with the divorce. And I think um, it's tragic to think of how many women might stay in relationships and in jobs for that very matter. Common. It's sad, um, very common, yeah. Yes, because of the, the, vulnerability, the financial vulnerability, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm all ears um, on all fronts. And also, well, the rest of us in terms of just what's happened with COVID and having to make sure that our businesses work for us. Mm -hmm. So. Chantal says next week is officially five years. Fantastic, Chantal. Congrats to you. And if I'm not mistaken, Donna, if I remember correctly, you've been in business for almost 20 years for yourself, I think. And um, Dawn Donna is in design and Chantal is in communications. So amazing. Um, yeah. 
there isn't a woman out there in business and our ladies will know this that you know hasn't had to dig really deep and have courage to make change and to create results and you know something that i've learned along the way is really to be grateful for this the challenges i don't call them struggles because although they can be that sometimes the more we shift our inner state and our energy the more we can you know, I just think get ourselves out of any dark holes or out of any, you know, feelings of stuckness. So I've really come to embrace this place that there is no such thing as stuckness. It really is a mindset. And although that might sound challenging to some, you know, we do have the power within us to solve anything. And in fact, I've just literally come off the back of um, a two day training just to retrain myself. I all, you know, I'm always refreshing my skills. And um, just reminded me really of the power that whatever we imagine, whatever we think of as a goal or an outcome, we can't create the image of it in our mind if it's not possible. And so we might look at something that seems like a big goal and think, well, how on earth do I make that happen? And, you know, I don't know where to start. But in actual fact, you know, when we go into that, um, place of going into the immediate, how do I make it happen? We're actually blocking our creativity in um, the deepest sense of our subconscious mind capacity to um, actually generate perhaps what is the most creative way or the most energy efficient way to actually deliver the, the project or the outcome. I, I never used to really um, think this way. I've trained myself to think this way that the more I actually relax myself, even though circumstances might look challenging or difficult, the more I can relax myself, um, the more I um, can allow my subconscious to give me the answers. And that has been something I've experienced over and over and over again. So many women are juggling businesses or careers or jobs and children and pets and all the things and I've got you know we've all got our own version of that and we make ourselves so busy that we don't have the time to actually allow the subconscious to work on our behalf we can very very easily fall into thinking that I have to consciously think about how to find the answer where the magic really happens in getting clear on what you want to create and allowing your subconscious to work with you, to generate ideas and give you, it's like a bit of a shortcut, a hack. So, I mean, I garden um, for relaxation often when the weather's good over here. And um, if I could tell you how many times I go, okay, I just need to step away from my desk right now. I'm gonna take half an hour break. I'll go and you know pull some weeds or do something in the garden. And um, very quickly, I, I get ideas and I get inspiration. So inspiration can really be um, the shortcut and the hack. And that's actually something that um, was how I came into sort of embrace this new project that came into my life actually last year. Um, I wasn't really looking for anything because I have you know, a, a, you know, a fulfilling, busy coaching practice. But I also will be very transparent because I knew the way I was feeling about my levels of energy and, um, you know, the, the whole COVID thing that was going on. And I knew that I was feeling very tired and quite jaded. And I, I was just putting it out there, like, what would it look like if I wasn't working so hard and there was a way to have money coming into my life? in a way that supported me and you know in a different way um i dabbled in the past with um different business models and you know being a professional marketer by training and background i'm very rigorous with the way i look at a project to see you know if it's valid if it's got long longevity um is it set up in a professional way um and right and i realized that i had been given a, a real gift actually that i'm now working with to bring to women and, and give them a, a financial lifeline actually a genuine lifeline in many cases now because jobs are going away or markets are changing and businesses can be you know doing one well doing well one month and then really struggling you know a few months down the line looking for a different way to actually support themselves so I think the message I want to just bring into this space here is to be open, to be very open 
to new things and new ideas and not to be too tunnel visioned into what we think life business is going to look like even three, six months out from now. Um, and to sort of marry that with resilience in the individual, you know, resiliency in mindset, resiliency in emotional well-being, um, really setting ourselves up for success in terms of rest and relaxation. And, you know, we know the things that we should do, sleep well, nourish ourselves well, exercise, all those things. Um, if we're not doing them, we're just deplete, we're depleting our resourcefulness. Yes, absolutely, Dawn. Thank you. And Donna has also mentioned, first of all, that she's been in business 19 years. Love that, Donna. Huge kudos to you. Yeah. Yeah. And also, she says, I like that there's no such thing as stuckness. And I want to pick on the, up on that too, Donna. I also really like that. And one of the things that I've, I've come across a couple of times recently is, you know, the whole concept of um, law of attraction and, and all of the things about overcoming money blocks, etc. Um, and yeah. there's a concept that's popped up a few times for me that actually, maybe the part of the problem is that you think you have money blocks and actually maybe you don't even, and, and that's creating a problem in your own mind. Um, yeah, I do of, think that. Mm, yeah, I don't, I don't like, personally don't like to talk about them as money blocks because I think we then were creating or telling ourselves, well, I've got a money block, you know, so or I'm making it difficult for myself straight away. But I will, um, you know, this is my personal view is that, you know, we do have money conditioning and, you know, our money conditioning comes from our childhood and, you know, how we were reared and the environment that we were reared in, and, you know, what our parents told us about money, um, what we experienced, you know, around abundance or lack in our early days. That, you know, it's well, well understood now that between the, the ages of zero and eight, our formative experiences around everything are really programmed in. So unless we know that in the first place and then become mind like conscious to it, um, we can't really change things very much. So the beautiful thing about empowerment work is really looking at beliefs and recognizing, OK, so what is the story that I tell myself? What are the beliefs that I hold that are driving my behavior, my thinking, you know, my stories that I tell myself in my head? Because the great thing that we now know through science and the last, let's say the last 20, 25 years of neuroscience and research is that the brain has neuroplasticity all our life. You know, we don't become, you know, so set that we can't change. We can. But of course, we do have to do then effort to make that change. We can reprogram ourselves um, to think differently and to feel differently. Now, of course, I'm a big fan of you know Bob Proctor, who I'm sure probably everybody has heard of on the planet these days. Um, you know, and, and I think he did say something very powerful to me in a group a few years ago. I did some training under him, and um, he said, "It's simple. It's very, very simple, but it's not easy." And um, at the time, I didn't really get what he was meaning. I kind of, I, I intellectually understood it, but the the fact it is so simple, but the the challenge comes with consistency. That's the that's the humanness mm -hmm. of the the challenge of being rigorous and being committed, and then looking at the character traits that we need to develop in ourselves to change our our mindset and our, our wiring itself. So, or literally our physiology and our wiring is made around money. I mean, I was not brought up in an abundant space. You know, we didn't go without food or anything, but, um, you know, my parents weren't wealthy. Um, and I know that there are stories around scarcity in my own mind. So interestingly, coming into this space now, talking about money in a, in a way which is so abundant and there is so much flow of money it's actually, um, it was quite a stretch in the first place to see how easily this money could flow in. Um, and I mean, I've been doing work on my money mindset for a, a good number of years. So I know that it's a reflection of what I think, what I feel, what I tell myself, um, you know, the decisions I make on a daily basis, programming I create every day is, it's always evolving. Um, but it's just interesting when you think that you've got to a certain level and 
you know, you recognize that there's another one, always there's another one. So um, embracing the, the upward spiral of abundance is practice and allowing it to come in. And um, I think just being willing to really sit with the stories that we tell ourselves, um, the law of attraction is absolutely real. And I think so many of us love the idea that we can, you know, create and attract what we want. And we absolutely can. But again, there's a technicality around that law of attraction is it's the law of vibration. Everything in the universe is physics and has a vibration. And so when we really focus on our vibration and the word vibrancy is, you know, associated to that. So our vibrancy is nourished by our rest, our relaxation, our filling ourselves up and all those physiological health and well-being things that we know we should do and having fun. All mm -hmm. a very, you know, beautifully woven tapestry to be the best version of who we are and to embrace abundance because that also is so deeply connected to self-love and self-appreciation as well. So it's there's, yes. there's not a singular answer. It's multifaceted, of course. Absolutely, Dawn. Brilliant. Music to my ears. And <laughs> Chantal has also mentioned that we are always the last thought. Everyone and everything else is more important than us. So it was from a little earlier in the conversation. And that's the thing allowing it to come in, changing one's mindset. Thank you for those comments. And um, it's yeah. so, it really is powerful, exactly. Um, especially with us women, because um, I don't know if it's a, how much our self-worth is tied into serving other people. And um, so really getting past that and allowing ourselves to deserve the abundance ourselves as well. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm just, I'm curious, Dawn, in, in all your work with women, with mindset and, um, you know, empowerment around money, do you see any typical stories, typical blocks that come up, you know, that we can look out for in ourselves? Oh, to, to, yeah. Yes, very much. I mean, when I first started coaching um, and, and mentoring women, it, I, I wasn't really majoring on money. Um, I was really majoring on confidence and self-belief and, you know, those inner states allow us to go forward and create something new and just put ourselves out there in the world and i realized very quickly through the you know what i was hearing from my clients that there was limitation around thinking that i was good enough or i could do it or i could afford it um i'm not worthy who am i to think this who am i to deserve this etc cetera, etc cetera. and um i think they're very common that you know am i good enough am i worthy are prevalent throughout the, the vast majority. I won't see everybody, but you know, they're very, very common. And um, you know, that again comes from our programming as children and the environment again, you know, our conditioned environment and our space. So, you know, how do we shift that? How do we start to recognize that, you know, money does not define us and money does not make us good enough or worthy. It's the way we perceive ourselves as humans. Like there is no human being walking around on the planet that's more worthy or deserving than another, or we're all equal. And, you know, as humans, we all have value and meaning to the, to the species, to, to you know, humanity. Um, just because somebody's achieved something and somebody else hasn't, or done something different, there is no, that doesn't make somebody more worthy, but it, the, the conversation is really up here. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of my, yeah, one of my mentors actually gave this great insight about um, value, val putting value into the marketplace and being paid and being worthy. That um, it's not about the value that we think we're putting out into the world. So, you know, we might make a product or a service and we attach a price to it and put it out there in the world. It's not about that level of the kind of pricing piece that actually determines our you know, how we get paid, it's actually how much we value ourselves in the first place that actually allows us then to appropriately charge for what we have to offer. So if we don't value it, first of all, then nobody else is going to value it in the same way. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a rearranging the thoughts in your head and looking at the paradigms that you've lived with and then actually allowing things to be easier 
And I, I'm going to just look, well, I realised that my dog's jumped on the sofa this morning. <laughs> I'm trying to, she's messed up all the cushions. I've like, got a dog and she, yeah, she does that. So, um, the, um, the, one of the greatest challenges that I had probably over the last five years was this concept of allowing, you know, allowing things to be easy because we've all heard this, you know, all the things, you know, what you resist persists. But how do we stop resisting the good things? Mm. You know, how do we stop resisting the the joy, the abundance, the opportunities, the connection, everything else? And I think that is something that's been radically life changing for me to actually stop overthinking, to just say yes to things, and to recognise that I am enough and I am worthy, and I I do bring value, and the same for all of us. Absolutely. And I think hand in hand with the undervaluing ourselves is the way that we are so much as women in the habit of giving more than receiving and can be quite uncomfortable in the space of receiving. And that's something I've also been working on quite a lot um, recently. And it's such a pleasure once you can enjoy the receiving and give the gift to the other person of giving to you. And um, instead of always being the one to take the, the, the gift of, of the pleasure of giving. And um, so, so do you have any tangible tips, Dawn, as, especially on this journey? So if you've come to the space where it's really opened up for you, I just want to see this coming quickly. I've got this on my wall and this is um, Chantal again. She says, I've got this on my wall. Don't work for free. Don't give away your talent, value and know your worth. Because whatever value you place on yourself will be the value others place on you. Love it. And Dawn is saying exactly that. Yes, Chantal, I love it too. Yes, I love that. And and also to then think about, you know, what you're doing um, in exchange for being paid. Do you absolutely love it? You know, we we only have one life. And if we're spending our time doing things that we don't enjoy that sort of dull our vibrancy and our, you know, our energetic frequency, then that's going to have an impact on our results, our success, our money. Um, and I think just also recognizing that there are perhaps some things that are even outside our experience or our knowledge that can change our world so quickly when we just allow ourselves to even think different thoughts um try this as a little exercise the next time you're kind of doing your morning preparation or your morning ritual um and it's sitting with yourself and just recognizing the thoughts that we think every day they reckon through through studying and research are something in the realm of um 80 ish percent the same every day so can you challenge yourself to think something new about yourself think something new about your circumstances and possibilities and really trust that everything that you might have in your, you know, in your vision for yourself is there to be created and, and, you know, experienced. And all we have to do really is to allow ourselves to drop the old stories and embrace new ones. And, you know, as I said, it's not difficult but the journey really is about being committed and you know being committed to yourself as the source like we are the source of everything we create so and again it's a big concept but we do source people we source situations we source you know all all things around us based on what we think we are worthy of what we think we're capable of you know our thoughts you know underpin our decision making and you know, the conscious life. Um, And so, I mean, I love that we've, you know, we've we've connected and chatted a a number of times and I love it every time that we we do, Naomi, because we always open up this space of different possibilities. And I know we've touched a little bit about money, but one of the things that I find most enriching in this journey of life and business is the people that we encounter along the way. And this notion that all of our results, all of our great experiences that we're striving to create will come through connection with other human beings. And so are we open to really deep connection and nurturing and fostering you know, lovely relationships with people that we can just embrace for the humans that they are and love that? And 
sometimes we don't know where you know a connection might open a door to another connection or you know the magic happens when we are i think being generous and being open and being loving in our connection and and you know I, i've just seen things happen when i've shifted my way of being into that space um because every human walking on this planet has got their own challenges their own struggles their own mindset things that don't serve them and others that do and the, i just hold this belief very strongly that as women in particular we are the nurturers and we can nourish relationships with other people that can just bring so much change and positivity into the world it's that's where i operate from i think empowerment of other women means that we don't selfishly seek to make ourselves wealthy yes we should have all of the comforts and the great things that allow us to enjoy the life that we want but then how else can we impact society and you know the world at large the environment like all these things that we might have interest in we all can be a source for a positive outcome yes, and hence absolutely. collaboration hence the collaboration piece you know Yes, exactly. I love that. Um, and everything that you were saying before, which um, I'd love to touch on again from the financial money mindset side, but so so really expanding into the collaboration, Dawn, I know you've done some, you've had some fantastic um, results with collaboration. Just quickly saying, um, empowered women, empower women. I've got a t-shirt with that on. Yes. That's oh, Chantal again. My language, um, yeah. Yes, totally what, Chantal. I'm we're all yeah. on that same boat here, aren't we? I know we are. All in this, yes. <laughs> so Dawn, would you like to share just a few ideas, stories with regard to your own experiences with collaboration and some of your clients? Um, because I know you've done some awesome things and I think it might really give some ideas to our mm. ladies who are with us. Yes. In terms, of, in, in terms really of expanding our reach and our impact, as you say. And just to mention something to you, Chantal and Donna are they, they collaborate often, they each have their own business, but they also partner on a podcast, which is about things that matter. And they also discuss wonderful things. I mean, really about uplifting society generally. So kudos to you two ladies also. Um, yeah, so that collaboration piece. So needed. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm a recovering sort of lone wolf, if you like, you know, when I was younger, when I was a young woman, um, I was really raised and went into quite a masculine environment and I didn't really appreciate other women at that point. I, um, you know, I, I just didn't and I wasn't exposed to networking and that kind of thing. It was really only when I, I started my own business and I started to recognize that I had to be different and think differently that I started to really, um, you know, embark on this journey of expanding reach expanding network building up community and um you know recognizing that i couldn't do what i wanted to do i couldn't create what i wanted to create by myself and I, you know, i've really come to acknowledge all great things that get created in life are never done in isolation you know they, they're just not all great outcomes are team efforts of some kind so I think coming from a place of recognizing other people's gifts and talents and the blessings that they bring through their skills into the world. And I think not being competitive. Um, I'm, I've never been a competitive person particularly, but um, you know, I think the competition that we have is really with ourselves as opposed to other people. And the more we can embrace and collaborate and actually share more with others, the more we all you know, it was a rising tide lifts all boats sort of mentality that people will work with me, will work with you, will work with somebody else because of who you are and how they resonate with you. And that doesn't mean that any of us takes away from anybody else because there's more than enough to go around for everybody. And I think giving somebody, you know, um, a leg up or a hand up um, is really the way to create more than monetary value it's the relational value and the humanness but the human value of being an entrepreneur being you know someone who wants to bring impact out there into the world so collaboration has always been the way i've built my business so um when i particularly came into the online space i worked with mentors who taught me different business models 
And the one that I love the most is doing um, online events and, you know, ret online retreats and having, you know, experts and guests and we co-create together and everybody wins. And so, you know, the philosophy that I love is always looking for where is the win-win in what I'm doing and how can I showcase somebody else and how can I bring in their value to perhaps, you know, I've got a community of women um, and, you know, my email list and the people that stay with me on my journey, but they might not actually want to be working, they might be ready to work with me yet or they, won't be, they might be looking for something a little bit different right now. And so I might not be the person that can physically serve them at that moment, but somebody else that I know or can bring into a, an event might be. And so I feel that I've done my job, actually, if I make a connection that helps somebody um, or two people. You know, we, I, I always believe that you know, we are compensated through not only the work that we do, but through our generosity and the actions that we take and... Um, the level of collaboration, I think, is what supports humanity going forward. And let's be honest, you know, we're in a really interesting slash challenging time mm -hmm. on the planet right now with so many things being challenging and changing mm -hmm. and like systems breaking down and new ones being created. There is a lot of turbulence on the planet and we need each other like never before. And you know, anything that divides society, I think we should be really looking at and think, how do we minimize division of all kinds? And how do we really open up to welcoming and appreciating people's differences and supporting everybody being who they are on the, in the planet and uh, solving so many things around, you know, poverty and like, uh, so <laughs> I could be here all day talking about this because I really yeah. think there is a solution about uh, around this and it's been somebody's crunched some numbers somewhere and worked out that there is enough money on the planet for everybody to be a millionaire but there shouldn't be poverty there really shouldn't be that kind of deprivation that we see and mm -hmm. this is why i feel so powerful uh, so passionately now about good people having money because they do good things with it and it's mm -hmm. so needed and again my mentor one of my mentors she says you know other people need you to be wealthy, mm. you know, because they need your money so you can help them. Yeah. yeah. I was doing a beautiful meditation this morning. Actually, I do a number of them and it was around um, once you can get yourself into that vibration of abundance and really do better for yourself, the generosity that can flow from you. Yeah. Um, from that sense of safety and security of being okay financially and then being able to do so much more. Um, and I just want to mention, Chantal gave another lovely comment here. She said, um, so she mentions her and Donna collaborate in business. We do a lot of stuff together. She's my partner and I love working with others. Small businesses need to support one another. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the only way to survive in this world. And she says, my weakness is someone else's. Exactly. Yes. Um, exactly. As love you're that. saying, Dawn. And I know um, I've been chatting also with Donna and I know with the number of freelancers who I know in my circle and including myself and my husband, um, we're all looking to be working internationally, you know, like, let's say designers, photographers, um, sorry, I was thrown off, says Donna, oh, welcome back, Donna, I'm glad you're back. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and that can be challenging. So, because the thing is, obviously, we, we're wanting to reach out and reach a wider audience. And I know there are many courses online that say, oh, get your first thousand, your, your first thousand people on your email list, it's so easy. But in my yeah. experience, it's not that easy. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't just happen overnight. But yeah. I know you, you've had some, some methods that have really helped you with regard to like your events, for example. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, I'm just thinking about our ladies watching that it could be a possible strategy in terms of getting the message out collaboratively and reaching a wider audience so that more people can see what you're up to collectively. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so, you're, you're right, there is so much out there and it's very difficult sometimes to sort of cut through the noise and to see actually what is the most logical business strategy to actually get, either get started or to build. And I think, you know, it's a very individual choice depending on what your business is, you know, how you like to do business, um, you know, and, and finding the right one thing that you can work with long enough to master and have it work really well 
that would be my advice first of all is to not try and do all the things not try to be on all the platforms but actually choose what resonates with you the most and stick with it and do it really well master it and then move on to adding other things once you've got the resource base you know to invest in support and help etc cetera, etc cetera. you know depending on what people's business is yes you know my preferred um audience building uh strategy has always been through doing online summits which is a very highly collaborative um process it takes about three months well it could take less than that it can take two to three months um but then you know you're you know that you're engaging with people who are interested looking for solutions and often you know at that point of actually wanting to buy um or looking for you know other ways that you can make connections so um I mean, the Facebook groups, we know they work. Um, Instagram, we know that works. LinkedIn, they all work. I think the key is to be very, very um, singular initially, and actually for a good while, to actually just master one or two mm -hmm. things and not try and do everything else. Because if we are a small business, a solopreneur, or you know something of that nature, our energy and attention gets so divided that it's actually counterproductive. Our, our brain has the capacity to only be able to do so many tasks. And, um, you know, the principles of critical mass, you know, if you're doing less and you're doing it better, you're going to move faster than if you're juggling all the balls. So, you know, again, working with women entrepreneurs um, for the past few, good few years, you know, I think that's something I've really, really, really wanted all of my clients to embrace that, Stay simple and focused until you get really steady and your income is growing nicely and then expand your strategies when you've got team and resources to do that. Um, it can be really counterproductive and slow you down massively when you do too many things. Absolutely brilliant, Dawn. And, and on that point, can you share a bit about how your process works? What are the different ways that you actually do support women entrepreneurs um, and the kind of processes, how people Oh, there's oh, was that Chantal who says, I love your advice. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chantal. Um, what are the different ways that you can support them from the, you know, the money mindset, the financial side and, and the business building? Um, just to clarify that. Um, yeah. so, so my personal preference right now, the work I'm doing with my clients, I, so I work one-to-one -one with um, women who are growing their businesses and their impact in the world. I tend to attract visionary women, um, creatives, artists, people that are, um, you know, they don't fit into any kind of mold. They've got their, their own unique path. Um, and I love to work in a very deep way. So I am that kind of person. I like intimacy with my clients to get to know them really well. So um, there is no one size sort of cookie cutter approach with any of my work. It's very, very unique. So, um, but it's all really about marrying the inner work with the outer strategy of what you're trying to create. So for example, um, a lovely client that I'm working with at the moment is um, a very highly acclaimed author. She um, probably is known to a lot of people who might watch this. And um, it's just interesting that you, know, you might look at somebody from the outside and think, wow, she's got it made, you know, she's got it all nailed. And then people open up to you and explain that, you know, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with that. Um, my experience as working with women particularly is we all really appreciate and need to be seen and heard for who we are and to feel safe mm -hmm. to talk about things that maybe we don't talk about on a regular basis or even with mm -hmm. um and that journey into being supported and allowing let things to be let go of and then building yourself back up on the inside that's a very a very personal experience no two client experiences ever the same um, so that's one thing I love to do, and I only have a you know I have a handful of lovely clients. I have I have some spaces that, I, that are open at the moment that I, I will you know I'll be offering shortly. But um, uh, I don't do big group programs at the moment. I may do that at some point. But the other thing I do have is the um, the, the wealth building mechanism that I was referring earlier to earlier on, which is a very very simple, low cost entry point mechanism which is using the money markets but completely um on a done for you basis 
And um, I, I did a lot of um, research into this before I, you know, stepped in myself and before I ever spoke about it to prove it for myself. And quite honestly, um, I, it's something that I think everybody should know about and, and have, because even though I'm doing my own, you know, my coaching and my mentoring work, my money is growing in a way that has, I have never seen, um, you know, the banks and the institutions use our money in the same way as this, and they get mega rich off it. And you know, they keep it for themselves. Whereas this particular container that I'm speaking about is, is I, I call it, um, it's like a, a 5D sort of new paradigm consciousness project, which is actually giving wealth back to people who will do good things, you know, in the, in the world of it. So I literally just set up an account and, you know, the money grows by itself. And I've I never think. had that experience. I'd like to say that I've never had that before. And um, whilst I had awareness of these mechanisms out there in the world, I didn't know how to participate. I didn't know how they worked. I dabbled in the past historically with certain things and lost money. And I swore at myself off them. And so to be in a place now where I am just less than a year down the line, and I have multiplied my investment literally more than two thousand percent no joke <laughs> and it's continues yeah and, and and it's kind of mind-blowing and and i find myself now in this community of other women who are very conscious and very loving and very like-minded you know we're all saying the same things as what i've been saying earlier about you know wanting to be a stand for women being free financially um you know we're all really wanting to invite women to join us on this path because the struggle can be real and the challenges that we all encounter can really have us up against the wall at times honestly i i have been in that place myself and and now you know the energy that i feel on the inside is so different it's like there's a there's a there's a peacefulness around money that I just feel supported. And I've never had that before. Even when I was married, I supported myself, you know, so. Um, Wonderful, Dawn. So, yeah, yeah. So, this, so this is intriguing. So for anybody watching who wants to find out more um, just about how it works and what's involved, um, would you oh. like to just share some details about that? Yes, absolutely. So what I'm doing is, well, you can just message me my, my email address is dawn at dawngrossart.com um, and I'll happily share information. We also hold um, small intimate gatherings just to informally um, introduce the idea to people and show them how they can find out more about it. And again, I'm just encouraging openness to new things. And even if you think you might know about things, you know, just still be open to learning because, um, uh, yeah, if I, I could have closed my mind to this, um and, and miss a great opportunity and you know i think I, I never like to i'm not wanting to sell anything i like to share and i think you know presenting information in a way that actually is trustworthy is just the safest way especially for women we want to feel safe with what we're doing we want to feel safe with our money um you know it's a very important conversation in fact Joining the two dots, in fact, Naomi, what I'm doing at the moment, which I don't think I told you, is I'm actually building an event at the moment um, specifically around this project um, to help more women globally to be on their own financial freedom path. Um, if I told you how many women I speak to who will share with me whether they're married or not, single or not, whatever the, the, their circumstances are, they don't feel that they are provided for for old age, they don't feel that they have the money to make you know, the choices that they really want to. Um, people tell me that they don't have pensions. Like, people will share with me, you know, actually, secretly, this is my situation. I really want to change it. And so we now find that we've got something which is a real gift and a blessing um, to give people as an, op as an option, you know, without attachment. So I'm creating a summit event at the moment, which will go live in November. And I'm bringing in some wonderful speakers I'm very excited about who are real experts 
in the field of money training, the energy of money, money mindset, money relationship. And I will be um, also bringing this project, you know, out to the audience at that point. So I'm so committed and I believe in this so much that, you know, within three to five years, I can show you know, women how to really have their own financial freedom and that I never thought I'd be sitting here saying that, you know, a few years ago. It's just... Wow, exciting, Dawn. Yeah, it's come into my life because I was open to it and I really feel more aligned with this than I've felt other than anything. It's, wow. it's, it's a timely solution for so many right now, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, that's exciting. I'm going to follow along. Um, and it, one of the things as well, I did um, a, a wonderful online course with Michael Bernard Beckwith. I don't know if I've mentioned this to you before. Um, and it was to do with life visioning. And yeah. so, and the point of it being that visualization is one thing, but it's limited in terms of what we can imagine, actually. And that is often limited by experience and things that we've seen around us. And what he was saying is so much in line with what you were saying earlier about tapping into our intuition, where the life visioning side is actually to go deeper and to allow that vision to come through you and yeah. to you um, from a deeper source. And so um, I love that because it can be challenging in terms of thinking of how are the different ways that money can come into my life. So fantastic yeah. if you can provide some some alternative options yeah. especially especially for those of us who are service-based and i know that's me uh we work time for money as photographers and videographers um, yeah. and i think for chantal and donna much the same yeah. um uh, which is also one of the reasons why i created my online courses which is another way to um really be able to get our message out there and reach more people but yeah. it's not an overnight thing. Um, it does take time to develop that to develop yeah. that platform and reach. It does. And you know, in fact, you're just reminding me, Naomi, for something, although we're talking about money and we're talking about connection and the way we do business and how we make impact in the world, the one thing that I hear alongside those subjects is really about I want my time back. You know, the number of women that say to me, I, I just don't want to work so hard. I actually want to work less. Or maybe I can create some employment opportunities for other people and expand my business, but I want to work less. And so that's really something that becomes very possible when you know you start to then to rearrange your you know the possibilities, let's say, financially. And I'm not a financial advisor, you know, I don't give advice, but I um, can show an evidence, um, you know, what's happening and what's creating, and you know, my own. And I'm very transparent. I will happily show anybody what I've done and created with this project. It's um, yeah, a, a, an open book, but I think let's just really remind people that there are always solutions. And I think yes. that's the most powerful mindset to operate from, that there is always a solution. And the 100% possible 100% of the time, that notion is so powerful. And it's like a distinction of thinking for yourself, like, okay, if I am acting as a leader in my life and I'm a leader in my business, then I am resourceful and I am resilient and I can find a way. And also I'm, because I'm not coming from fear and scarcity, I actually am open to new things. And that's really where the magic, I think, begins to happen. You know, I've man manifested so many things from that place. This has I mean, like so many things which you know have just been surprising, you know. And my life is not perfect, you know, my life is not all a bed of roses by any means, but you know, I just think every human has their stuff. But but you know, I think if we can make ourselves comfortable, if we can make ourselves um arrive at this place where we feel peaceful and happy and content with having the you know our our necessary things provided. Um, then we can really embrace our creativity and make the choices that we really want to make about who we spend our time with, what we do with our free time, you know, and how we expand on, you know, building community and relationships with friends. It's the yeah. richness comes from, I think, putting that groundwork in place. 
Yes, I think that's beautiful, Dawn. And Chantal actually says you are so inspiring, Dawn. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chantal. And yes, and Dawn, something, another thing that Michael Bernard Beckwith said came to mind as you were speaking. And um, just on the same subject, he was saying, you know, once you become really good at something, like let's say you become a really brilliant teacher, you know, it's not to get to the point where all of a sudden you sit back and you do nothing and contemplate your navel. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually exactly as you say about having that foundation of safety and security and peace, actually, yeah. that's the beautiful word to yeah. then be able to be more free to share your gifts in a more expansive way because you don't have that daily grind really bearing down on you. Um, so this is beautiful, Dawn, thank you. Um, just, oh, so if I may just add something in there, just to sort of echo that name just really quickly. One of my mentors is um, you know, a very uh, spiritual teacher and speaks a lot about um, sort of the, the energy that we operate from and how that supports our results in the world. And he says that the most powerful place that we can operate from is being in inner peace. So whatever's going on around there in the world, out there in the crazy world that's, you know, we're on right now, um, it's how do we find our, our home inside us that is peaceful. And that wow. raises our vibration in such a way that we are able to then tap into the plethora of possibilities and all the beautiful people that are around on this planet. I mean, I know we've you know, probably have to draw to a close in a moment, but um, I've been so blessed over the past couple of days to participate in this training that I did, where we realized like the richness of humanity is the blessing of being, you know, an entrepreneur and being on this planet. We get to serve others, not only through our products and services, but through being our best selves. And that's such a powerful awareness that each and every one of us here is a gift to somebody you know in some way just by saying something or being present with somebody and yeah, yeah. beautiful dawn thank you and no greater joy than being free to really be our best selves yes yeah and so whatever it takes i think for people to get really intimate with themselves first of all like what am i struggling with what isn't working in my life? You know, what do I want to be different? And, you know, and I'll actually just, as a, as a sort of like a little tool, if you like, you know, to actually sit and do an audit with yourself very honestly, you know, what are, and, and have either two columns or two sheets of paper, you know, what's working really well in my life right now and what's not working? What am I not happy with or what would I like to be different? And get really clear about those things and also get very committed. And I've used that word a few times today get really committed about what you will do about it to alter the things that are not working because they're affecting your energy and to enhance the things that are working really well so you can have more of that. And really that's um, that place of audit then is quite revealing to us as to what we need to put our attention on to focus on the healing or repairing or changing or eliminating. And then what we can then move our attention onto building and um, you know, improving. But our attention is our is the key. You know, what we put our attention on is really what we're creating more of. Yes, beautiful, Dawn. Thank you so much. And we will need to bring this to a close. Um, I, I love what you've <laughs> I love what you've shared. Thank you. And I'm so grateful for you uh, joining I'm us. So grateful for you also. I really am. And um, so I'd love to keep our audience in touch. Thank you, Chantal and Donna, for being with us live and for any of the rest of you who are watching the replay or with us that we're not aware of. Um, and so Dawn, just it, for anybody who's wanting to find out more, we put up your email address, oh, dawn, dawn at dawngrossart.com. I'll share that um, again below the video. Yes. And then... I was gonna say, I do have a website, but uh, you know, I don't really, it's a little outdated. So it's, it's just my name as well, dawngrossart.com, but um, I'll keep you posted on the summit and the event yeah. and if anybody wants to come in and have a listen to some of the lovely speakers, you're very welcome to do so. And if you'd like to know more about the project I've been talking about, then please connect with me. And I will be sharing about that on the event, you know, just so people can weigh it up and take a look and see if it's for them. And 
you know, there's never any pressure, but it, it really is quite something to take a look at, I would say. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dawn. Um, really appreciate it. Um, and thank you all. And we will definitely be in touch and I'll keep everyone updated. Thank you. Thank you so much. And again, um, I appreciate you, Naomi. Thank you for inviting me here today. Great pleasure. Thanks everyone for joining us. Have a lovely rest of your day. Mm -hmm.